Hey, Algebra 2. Today I'm going to teach you how to do something called completing the square. So it's a process that we use when we want to move something from standard form over into vertex form. So there's a couple of steps that we have to do. The first one we titled move the junk to the trunk. Um, that's basically isolate the x squared and x terms. So we want to isolate those two terms on one side of the equal sign. That means I'm going to have to add the 5 over to the other side. All right, so I put this little blank here, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Step number two says on the quadratic side, that's this one right here, you need a leading coefficient of 1. In problem number 1, that is check. It is all done. We don't need to do anything more. Step 3, so that stands for completing the square. So that says you take half of the middle term. So we're talking about the 6 right now. Half of the middle term and square it. So then I'm going to divide it, and then I'm going to square it. I really, really do like you writing this step out right here because um, you'll see why we use it in a minute. I want to add 9 to both sides. So 9 is the value that completes the square. This is an equation. There's this property of equality that says as long as you add the same number to the both sides, you can do that. Uh, this left side, I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. So I get a 14 equals x plus 3 squared. All right, so now you might be asking yourself, how did you just jump from this down to this? I factored it. And this x squared plus 6x plus 9 is what we call a perfect square. So let me show you. If you make your ACB chart and you want factors of 9 that add up to 6, that would be 3 and 3. So I would generally write that as x plus 3 x plus 3. Anything times itself is the same thing as squared. So that's how I jumped from this trinomial down to this uh, factored. Notice whatever number you have here is always, always going to be the number that goes into the parentheses right there. Um, step number four, write the quadratic as parentheses squared, done. Move the junk back to the car. That is code for move the constant to the other side. So I'm going to subtract the 14 over to the other side. And finally write this as x plus 3 squared minus 14. So this is in vertex form. There's my h, there's my k, and so the vertex, uh, your x lies, so you always have to change signs, so it's at negative 3, negative 14. Yeah. Uh, so different, different versions give you different information. In vertex form, you get the vertex out of it. In standard form, well, I at least know what the y-intercept is, so different versions um, are helpful. I'm going to jump down to number 3 because it has a coefficient of 2 that we're going to have to work with. Step number 1, isolate your x squared and x term, move the junk to the trunk. So that means subtract 
17 to the other side. Alright, step two says you need a leading coefficient of one. If it's not, factor out the leading coefficient. So leading coefficient is LC. This is your leading coefficient. It's the coefficient of your biggest exponent. Y minus 17, give me a plus blank. I'm going to factor out a 2. Uh, hold on, I'm going to factor out a 2. And so when you factor out, you divide it. So that negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. And then I need a little blank here. So now the part that's in the parentheses, dang it, okay, that gets an X. Um, this is the part where now I'm going to complete the square. So it said, take your middle term. So make sure you take your sign with it. So it's negative 6 divided by 2 squared. Negative 3 squared equals 9. So 9 is the value that completes the square for the parentheses. But I can't just add 9 right here. Why? Because you have the distributive property that you have to think about and take into account. 2 times 9 is 18. I really added 18 to both sides. On the left, I'm going to combine like terms. So that adds up to 1. This right side factors as x minus 3 squared. So if that's a, if your middle term is a negative, it's going to continue there and it's going to keep showing up right there. So that's why I like showing me dividing it because before you square it, because that number is always what goes in your parentheses. And then it says move it, move the constant to the other side. So I have 2x minus 3 squared minus 1. So in vertex form, you have a, h, and k. I could tell you that this stretched by a factor of 2, and it went right 3 and down 1. h and k work together to tell you what your vertex is. So your h always changes sign, so it's located at 3, negative 1. Uh, number 4. We have the y on the right side. It's okay. If that bothers you, you can switch it around. Step number 1. Isolate your x squared and your x term. So that means I'm going to add the 4 to the other side. Looking up there, now I'm on step two. On the quadratic side, you need a leading coefficient of one. Right now I have a leading coefficient of negative three. And the instructions say factor it out. So when you factor it, it's like you're dividing it. When I divide a negative three out, I get an x squared. Negative 12x divided by negative three is a plus four x. And then you're going to leave yourself a blank. So that when you complete the square, whatever number you add here, you're going to have to multiply it by negative 3, but you want room to add or subtract the same number from both sides. All right, so there's my middle term. It says take the middle term, divide it by 2, and then square it. You divide it by 2, and then when you square it, you get 4. 
So here in the parentheses where you have a 1x squared, that's where it goes. But on this side, so think of distributing. I take negative 3 times 4, and that gives me negative 12. So I am really subtracting 12 from both sides. That 2 right there is what's going to go into my parentheses when I factor when I factor it. So this becomes x plus 2 quantity squared equals y. Combine like terms. Step 5 says move the constant to the other side. So y equals negative 3 x plus 2 squared plus 8. There's my a, there's my h, and there's my k. I can see that this um, reflected and stretched by a factor of 3. It went left 2, so my vertex is located at h, k, and it went up 8. Alright, go try your homework and see if you can do some of these problems by yourself.